interior walls and ceilings will need at least some preparation before you get onto the really exciting bit of bringing your colour scheme to life. It's worth spending a bit of extra time and care over this as you'll get a much more professional finish and your painting and decorating will last much longer. For more information, check out our How to Prepare Interior Woodwork for Decorating film. In this film, we're going to show you how to properly prepare three typical surfaces ready for painting or wallpapering. This recently plastered wall, this previously painted wall with a few cracks and holes, then this previously wallpapered wall. All the principles we're going to show should be the same for ceilings, should you need to do any work on them. But it's generally the walls that have the most damage from everyday life. Now whatever the surfaces you're preparing, the principles are always the same. They need to be dry, free from grease and dust, any holes or cracks, flaky plaster, peeling paint or bits of wallpaper. If you can, take as much as possible out of the room and move all furniture to the middle of the room and cover with dust sheets. Protect the floor work area with cloth sheets just in case any water gets spilled. If you use plastic on the floor, it could get slippery. This is a newly plastered wall, which is probably the easiest surface to paint onto. You just need to prime with a special priming paint to create the best surface. Allow all bare plaster or new plaster to dry out completely before decorating. You can tell when it's dry when any dark patches shrink away or it turns this light pink or grey colour. Now all new plaster will need priming and priming is essentially a foundation coat so that all top coats of paint can adhere to it much better. If you don't prime the plaster with sealer, the plaster will soak up paint like a sponge so you'll waste a lot and end up doing more coats than you need to. Top tip, alternatively you could prime the wall with watered down emulsion, two parts paint to one part water. This also seals the plaster, making it less sponge-like so the next coat stick onto the surface better and the finish is longer lasting. Walls that have already been painted are fairly easy to prepare for new paint, but it's worth doing a few things first to help with that professional longer lasting finish. First off, we need to fill these cracks and holes. It's worth just quickly washing the area you're working on first, as if there's any dust or grease in the gouge, the filler may not bind to the wall or ceiling properly. Even if you're planning on wallpapering, it's worth filling holes as if it's big enough the paper may indent into the hole. Make sure you have some wall filler and work it into the crack or hole with a flexible scraper like so. Allow any patched areas to dry thoroughly, check the packet to see how long it will take, then smooth down with a fine sandpaper. When sanding, protect yourself with a dust mask and make sure there's good ventilation in the room. Top tip, take a piece of sandpaper and fold it like this. This means that when you're sanding down, the paper won't slip out of your hands because you'll get a grip on the grain. Alternatively, you could wrap it around an old piece of wood which will give you the same grip. Once you're happy with any areas you've filled and sanded, use a new piece of the same sandpaper and lightly sand all the walls and ceiling. You're not doing this to remove any of the surface, it's just to give it texture so the paint has a better surface to bind to. This is called creating a key, another thing to help with that professional finish. But this is also a good time to sand off any peeling paint if you have any. One more thing you need to do is to give the area a wash to remove any grease, crayon or grubby finger marks. To cut through most dirt and grease, it's best to use sugar soap. It's not actually made of sugar, but it is slightly acidic, which is why it's always best to wear protective gloves, as it can irritate the skin. It comes in packets you mix with water, or sprays like this. You could also use warm water and detergent. Once you've washed it down with sugar soap, 
always give the surface a final rinse with plain water. Leave it to dry thoroughly and then you're ready to paint. Wallpapered surfaces take a little more work because you should remove wallpaper to get back to the original plaster. Now you can paint over wallpaper but you may not get the best result and you must make sure that it's always stuck down firmly. We're going to show you how to remove this old wallpaper, prepare the wall ready for painting. Now score the paper with a stripping knife like this or you could use an orbital scorer. Don't press too hard as you don't want to damage the plaster behind the paper. Then soak the wallpaper with a sponge and hot water as it will make it much easier to remove. Wet a few metres at a time and leave it to soak in for say 5 minutes. Slide your wide stripping knife into a seam and the paper should come off in fairly large sections. Just repeat this process until you've removed the paper. However, if your wallpaper is proving really stubborn to remove, even after a long soak, there are a couple of options. Firstly, wallpaper stripper solution. This works by breaking down the wallpaper paste on the back of the paper. You still need to read the instructions on the back of the bottle, but essentially, you still score the wall, soak with the solution, leave for a little while, and then strip off with the knife. Secondly, you could try a steam stripper. You can buy these in your local store. As always, please read the instruction. But the way it works, you fill this tank with water, and when it's plugged in and switched on, it acts like a kettle, heats up the water, pushes steam through the pipe, and the steam comes out the pad at this end. So just hold the pad at the bottom of the length of wallpaper for a minute or so, until the paper appears damp. Move the pad up to the next section whilst you use your stripping knife to remove the steam paper below. Repeat this process until all the paper is removed. Make sure you protect yourself from the steam with gloves and maybe a long sleeved shirt. Do not leave the steamer in one place for too long as this can cause the plaster to blister. Be careful when steaming around electrical outlets, switches and wood trim. Use a step ladder when working above chest height, so hot water does not run down your arm. Once you have the bulk of the paper off, you may still be left with these little bits of paste and paper tufts on the wall. You really need to get them off by using the stripping knife. You might occasionally get a really extra stubborn bit, so you can use a bit of sandpaper to help get rid of it. Almost there. Now use a new piece of the same sandpaper and lightly sand all the walls. You're not doing this to remove any of the surface, it's just to give it texture so the paint sticks better. When sanding, protect yourself with a dust mask and make sure there's good ventilation in the room. One more thing you need to do is to give the area a wash to remove any grease, crayon or grubby finger marks. So now your walls are all prepared and ready to paint. For more ideas and know-how, check out more of our films or go to DIY.com or pop into your local store.